Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jason Randall. Um, I am the lieutenant um, assigned to supervise our investigations bureau. And the reason we're having this uh, meeting this morning is just to briefly talk about uh, some of the ongoing proactive um, activities the sheriff's office is doing to combat human trafficking um, in Utah County and also in the state of Utah. Uh, our, we did a recent operation. Um, this occurred on February 14th in 2020. Um, it occurred in one of the cities in, in Utah County in, in the city of Lehigh. Uh, and during this uh, human trafficking um, enforcement operation, uh, it was extremely successful. And the uh, most important aspect of this ap operation was the fact that uh, we were able to identify and rescue three victims uh, that were being human trafficked. And uh, these victims are, are, are cooperating with us. Uh, we've been able to get them resources. We've been able to get them uh, opportunities to uh, get out of the situations they were in, um, in which they were being human trafficked. Um, some other aspects of this operation that are really important to talk about is that a total of 21 arrests were made uh, during this three-day operation. Um, and in conjunction with this human trafficking operation, we always try to focus on child traffickers as well, online child predators. And this is, this is uh, focusing on online, online child predators is something that specifically our special victims unit with the sheriff's office, uh, they, they do these cases on a regular basis. Uh, we, we did one child online trafficking operation uh, back in November in conjunction with ICAC. And uh, we've got more of those operations planned, as well as more human trafficking uh, operations planned for this year. Uh, in total, I think we have four proactive operations that we'll be doing uh, throughout the course of the coming year. Typically, we don't go into details on those because they are undercover operations. And so we're, we're not going to give out too many details on that. But some other interesting aspects of this operation that we did in February is that we had a total of 10 law enforcement agencies that participated in this operation. Uh, Homeland Security Investigations was vital with some of the equipment and manpower they gave us. Uh, multiple law enforcement agencies in Utah County um, gave us their investigators and participated during this operation. With, without them, it would have been a success. Um, we also have to give a big thank you and a shout out uh, to the Maloof Foundation. The Maloof Foundation is a, is a private charitable organization uh, that was created to educate people about human trafficking. And through the Maloof Foundation and their um, on-site uh, educational program, um, on-watch educational program, they partnered with another company, Radix, and uh, they donated $60,000 to the Sheriff's Office for the sole purpose of human trafficking prevention and human trafficking enforcement. And so with that donation from the Maloof Foundation, we were able to use those funds to secure a site to actually do the operation. And then um, it assisted in the equipment and assists in some of the overtime um, expenses. Because these, uh, these type of um, operations are extremely expensive between the overtime and the equipment and getting the location and just the time and manpower and equipment involved. Uh, it, it runs into the thousands of dollars, which is kind of prohibitive in running these operations. And so the Maloof Foundation, this, this donation was critical in saving these three victims. And so um, the operation, again, was incredibly successful. There was a number of uh, agencies that participated and that made it successful. And um, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to take them. These are 21 individual cases that came in. Yes, um, most most of these victims were being trafficked through social media platforms, and I, I won't get into the details of those because those are operational um, facts that we're not we're not, not going to talk about, but. Um, we had undercover officers posing on social media platforms, um, and we also were responding to ads on social media platforms. And it's also important to note that as part of this operation, I mentioned the, the one 
um, child predator. We actually, we actually arrested three individuals that showed up to have sexual activities with an individual that was underage. Um, one of the individuals that showed up um, brought rope, brought tape, brought toys, brought um, lingerie, uh, and this person was under the understanding that they were going to meeting, be meeting with a 13-year-old child. And um, this, in addition to the three actual victims that were saved that day, there's no doubt in my mind that we have saved multiple other child victims because this, this man is a perpetrator and he showed up with the intent of doing harm to a 13-year-old girl. Um, these victims, my understanding, were all from all from Utah. And were they being forced into this as a drug habit, or um, typically, typically human trafficking victims? Um, there were, without going to specific about the specific victims, um, we recovered a significant amount of dope, of drugs, um, in, during this case. We made drug arrests in addition to the trafficking arrests. And so a lot of times uh, victims get in a place where they think it's hopeless, where they don't have a choice. And that could be uh, socially motivated, that could be uh, personally motivated, that could be motivated by addictions, whether it's drug or alcohol or other things. And so there's a variety of reasons why victims feel they get in these positions where they don't have any choice but to um, participate because they don't, they don't see a window, they don't see a door out. And the whole purpose of these operations is to, is to address that very question that you brought up, is to identify that need, identify why they're in that situation, because um, in all the victims I've worked with, and uh, there, there's been many, and I do want to point out, this is Sergeant Elise Hines. Uh, she supervises our Special Victims Unit. Uh, she's actually worked with more victims than I have. And uh, one thing we have learned in doing these operations is that every victim is different. And the reasons why every victim is in a human trafficking situation is going to be different. And so what we were able to do in this operation is after, after we were able to identify them and have them come in, however that happened, is that we were able to sit down with them and have an interview with them and talk to them and try to find out exactly uh, what was triggering this behavior, and in doing so, we can then find the answers and those solutions and hopefully get them out of that situation. Yes. Absolutely. And whether that, whether that force is through drugs or through coercion or through violence or through love that this person loves me and so I'm going to do it because I don't know anything else. And so there is a variety of reasons how and why victims are forced to, to participate in this human trafficking you know, cycle of abuse. And that's one of the purposes of these operations is to identify those you know, causation factors and hopefully remove them and give those individuals a chance to turn their life around and get out of that situation. Um, the, rephrase your question. I want to make sure. So for the people who were arrested, were they related to the, were some of them related to the victims? Were they supposed to be responsible for these children in some way, like the adults that were supposed to be responsible? We, we, didn't, uh, we didn't arrest anybody that was tra actually trafficking children. Um, we were arrested people that were participating in human trafficking, and then we were arrested three male individuals that arrived thinking that they were going to be with the child, uh, which in and of itself is a form of human trafficking when they're, when they're showing up to have sexual relations with an underage child. The three victims are adults. Yes, the, the three specific victims that were rescued um, that are, are working with us in our programs um, were all adults. Sorry, I didn't hear that one at all. Um, I did. I do not think we had any. One of the victims was. 
So one of the victims was um, an immigrant. And so, and again, and we, we love bringing Homeland Security into these, into these type of operations. One, they're a great partner, and we've worked with them for years. Um, and the other side is because they can bring the, the federal aspects into it. And for example, uh, one of the, the travelers is what we call them. One of the males that showed up to have sexual intercourse with a 13 year old, he traveled from Wyoming. And because he's coming from out of a state, that makes it a federal offense. And so that is being looked at uh, to take that case federally. And I actually don't know if that's been, if they're going with that or not. So that's part of the investigation that's still ongoing. It, it is, and, and, and we are, and that's one of the reasons there has been a little bit of delay, and, and typically we don't do this type of press release on these type of operations, because from the law enforcement side, quite frankly, um, we want to keep it quiet. We want to rescue the, the victims and not put a lot of advertising out there, because we have upcoming operations that we don't want to jeopardize. But at the same time, human trafficking is a serious problem in, U in Utah and in Utah County. And it's happening, and I don't think people realize that. So it's a, it's a balance for us between education and enforcement. And this is where, like, the Maloof Foundation comes in, and in their on-watch educational program, people can go to that and get educated about human trafficking that's occurring right here in, in Utah and to, you know, educate themselves. And in, by doing, in doing that, that's why we do this type of press release. But because we recovered the cell phones, um, we've got numerous ongoing investigations into human trafficking rings that are associated, that came up as a result of this operation that are, that are all ongoing investigations. Absolutely. Um, again, through, through different resources, if we have a victim of human trafficking that needs a place to stay, we will find a place to stay for them. If our victim advocates in Utah County are phenomenal, um, they, have, they have grants as well. We have all kinds of resources that we can make available. Um, and if a victim, it's not even just human trafficking, if a victim is a victim of domestic violence or in a situation that they have to get out of, uh, there are resources available that we make available to them, whether it's lodging, whether it's food, whether it's shelter, we, we can, and, and education, we can try to get them out of those situations to, so that they can, again, pull them out of the cycle that they're in and put them on a different track and try to get them whatever help they need to stay out of that situation. Um, that's, a, that's a great point, um, Spencer. So we come into contact with a lot of victims that, that aren't there yet. Um, it, it's the old adage, you can take a horse to water, you can't force him to drink. Um, we, and part of this operation, sometimes um, it's, some people don't want to accept the help that's there. Um, I, I think the best answer to that is, you know, we have, we're, we're here at a, at a county jail that will have people that get booked into jail multiple times. And for whatever reason, they keep coming back. And then something happens in the last incident that put them here. Well, they make a conscientious choice. I've got to do something different. And sometimes our victims are like that, where they just, they're not ready to make that change. Um, and again, they're in that, that cycle of abuse. And, and it's not that they're doing they're not doing anything wrong. It's just that in the situation they're in, the victims can't always see the light at the end of the tunnel or that there even is a light. And all they see is, quite frankly, doom and despair. And one of the reasons these type of operations are so important is because maybe the first time these services are offered, a victim isn't in a place personally that they can avail themselves of those resources. And maybe not even the second time. But then the third time we come in contact with them and we can give them these resources and say, hey, this is where we're at, that third time becomes the trigger. And then 
we can make, we can help avail them of those resources. And so it's it's just putting those opportunities out there and and helping the victims know that are in these you know cycles of abuse that there are other options and there is an entire organization um, ourselves, Sheriff Smith, um, our Victims Advocate Union, the the programs, you know, the Maloof Foundation. There there are organizations out there that are set up to help these victims that are in these situations of human trafficking and they just need to reach out. We need to come in contact with them so we can give them that help. So are these victims, uh, what type of victims, are these organizations going to help them get readjusted and whatnot? That's, that's what's happening right now. Yeah, the, the, the victims have been set up with, with services and follow-up is, is ongoing and, um, and we just talked to Sergeant Hines this morning and those victims are still working with the appropriate individuals to help them in their situations. I'm sorry. It is. It was 2022. So yeah, um, we actually we actually did one of these in 2020 as well. Uh, we did one in uh, we didn't do one in 2021 because of COVID. But um, it's important to know that the sheriff's office, we have been committed to to enforcing human trafficking violations um, as long as I've been with the sheriff's office. As long as Sheriff Smith has been here, this has been. Um, a platform to be proactive in finding both online adult and child predators. And so we did an operation in 2020. We had, we had a child predator operation in 2021, and then this one happened in 2022. And like I said, we have at least four more operations planned for um, before the end of the year. They are. There's some, there's some Johns in there too. And again, it's, it's looking at both sides of the problem. And, it's, and as, we, as we do these operations, um, we're kind of playing both sides. At least you, were the victims, um, are three, were they located in the same place? Yeah, they were, my understanding is they were from kind of all over. So they're like three individual arrests that led to the finding of three victims? Correct. Yes. And we, again, we, this, this operation resulted in, in 21 arrests, and again, three of them adults seeking children, uh, and we victims that were saved. The operation, we did that in 2020, uh, we made 25 arrests, and with very similar numbers. And it's, so this is, a, this is a significant problem that I think people don't realize, and, and again, if, if they want to get educated, they can go to the Maloof Foundation's website go to the OnWatch educational program that they have set up. And, um, and this program was set up by human trafficking survivors, by actual victims that are now participating in finding a solution and getting the education out there about what's happening. It's a, it's a great program. Um, yeah, I would almost say 50-50. It's probably about 50-50. Um, the, the operation took place in the northern part of the county, and so we were getting, we were getting people from everywhere. Like one person came in from Wyoming. Uh, we were getting people from Salt Lake, from Utah County. It was just, they, yeah, when, when you start doing things online, it's, you have no idea where they're going to be coming from. Oh, this is this isn't even the tip of the iceberg. This is like a snowflake on an iceberg. This is the, again we're we're barely scratching the surface, and there are there are victims out there that truly right now are all they see is black, and they don't see hope. They don't see light. All they see is black, and they see no way out. 
And so one of the reasons we wanted to do this is to let those victims know that there are answers, there are solutions, there are people that care. And jump on our website, call us, send us a message, whatever they can do, because there are victims out there screaming for help, and they're in our own neighborhoods. They are in our own communities, and we just don't see them. One, because they sometimes they look like everybody else, and two, sometimes we're just not paying attention, and we don't want to get involved. And um, as a sheriff's office, we want to change that, and we want to find those victims and get them out of the situations they're in and get them whatever help they need to to turn their life around and get and get them out of this just horrendous place there they are any other questions